How do you know if your snake likes being held? How do you know if your snake loves you? How do you know if maybe your snake's about to bite you? We're gonna go over behavior today. Snake behavior, but probably more importantly, human behavior. I'm Bob Bledsoe, and this is Damara. She is the snake that's going to be with me today, mainly because she is not in shed and she's not currently digesting food. But also, she is just delightful. She's my biggest girl, and I don't think I featured her really. She's been she's been on the channel before, but I haven't really featured her. Uh, she's about thirty six hundred grams, something like that, and rapidly building follicles. We're waiting for an ovulation. So, speaking of snake behavior. Uh, if she shows me signs that she's uncomfortable up here, I'll just put her back. But she's doing great right now. She likes to sort of explore around. Behind the camera, as always, is my brother Kent. He is the only employee here at Green Room Pythons. Kent, what do you know about snake behavior? I know that if you look at them wrong, they will bite you. They will latch onto your neck and squeeze you like a spent tube of toothpaste. They will kill you in your sleep the first chance they get. Doesn't even have to be, you don't even have to be asleep and they'll kill you as soon as like that. Thanks, Kent. Everything you just said is wrong. Kent is uncomfortable with snakes. But I do like free shirts. Look at this shirt that I got from LNT Reptiles. They sent it to me for free, and it's got stuff on the back, and stuff on the front. I like all the free shirts, so send your free t-shirts to Green Room Pythons, care of Kent. That was really nice of l &T Reptiles, but you don't need to pander for shirts, Kent. Mom won't take me to the Gap anymore. So we're gonna talk about snake behavior. Uh, not just snake behavior, but human behavior as well. And, and we're actually gonna start with human behavior. We're gonna speak about that a little bit. Then we're gonna talk about a thing that I made up called mirroring. Then we're gonna just cover the basics quickly. And the reason is that the basics are pretty quick. It's not that, that difficult or complicated, but also I'm gonna do a more comprehensive video on the basics uh, once I have some hatchlings in the house that are a little bit more defensive. I don't own a snake that's defensive or flighty, really. They're all pretty much just delightful. So I'll wait to do a more extensive video on that, but let's get to it. Those of you doing your research uh, probably know that there are a lot of videos on snake behavior and um, a lot of people will cover some of the same things that I'm gonna cover, but as always, I try to put uh, something a little bit different or something that I didn't find in YouTube videos uh, on these. And the first thing that I'm gonna talk about I think is really important and it's not something that is discussed very often. And that is a thing called anthropomorphism. Uh, that is attributing human characteristics to an animal. And really, it's not even human characteristics, it's whatever the word would be for attributing dog and cat characteristics to an animal. You know, this animal behaves this certain way, that must mean this. When a dog runs up to me, it loves me and wants to play. When a snake comes up to me, does that mean that it loves me and wants to play? Does it mean that it wants to be handled all the time if it's at the front of the tub when you walk into the room? Sometimes anthropomorphism is fine because it's harmless and it's like, oh, my snake is wrapping around my neck. He's giving me a hug. He loves me. I love him too. I'm going to make sure he has fresh water all the time. That's great. No problem there. The problem is when certain behaviors are misinterpreted and not identified correctly and it causes the snake stress. A really easy example of that would be my snake comes to the front of the tub when I come into the room, that means he wants to be handled all the time. And it probably means that he wants food. Now it could, it could mean, hang on, I gotta get him off, my, get her off my mic. You're on my mic, baby girl. There we go. Uh, so it could mean a couple things. And, and a lot of this is um, just sort of guesswork. A, it probably doesn't mean that your snake wants to be with you. And I know that's hard for certain people to hear, but uh, ball pythons are not social creatures. 
Now, I will say there are studies that, that have come out that talk about finding uh, ball pythons in groups in, during certain times of the year. Um, and that is a thing. However, that does not mean that they're social creatures. They're not, uh, unless they're really looking for a mate, they're not trying to hang out with other ball pythons. If they're trying to hang out with anybody, it would be other ball pythons. It would definitely not be humans. Okay, so, um, you know, your snake probably doesn't necessarily love you. Your snake probably tolerates you. But I believe, and this is just my guess here, I'm going to try to, I'll, I'll try to flag things that, that are just my guess, or it'll be obvious, because how could you prove some of this stuff? But my guess here, a, a lot of times is, a, either your snake is hungry and associates with you with food because they know that you're the one who provides food. Um, the other thing might be that your snake genuinely does enjoy exploring around outside their environment and they know that you are a tool to get them, <laughs> to get them out of their uh, enclosure and, and into exploring. And really a good way to test that is take your snake out and put your snake in your lap and does it stay there? Does it stay with you all the time? Or will it go exploring eventually? Another thing you can do um, is, is take your snake out of its enclosure and just hold it right there. Let it go wherever it wants next to the open enclosure. Does it go back into the open enclosure or somewhere else? 90% of the time, it's probably going to go back into the open enclosure. The fact that it doesn't yell and scream when you pull it out and, and fight you necessarily doesn't mean that it loves to come out. It just means that it's tolerating. So that's not a huge problem. But here's a couple of examples that, that are a little bit of a bigger problem. I came across a video on YouTube. It's not, it's not even a popular video. I don't know if, I mean, you'd probably find it if you did some sort of search. But I just stumbled across it. And it was this woman um, recording a video with her cell phone that she thought was adorable. And it was her snake on a blanket slithering like this and not going anywhere, but slithering fast. And, sh and she was like, she was like, oh, look, he's got the zoomies. He's, he's doing his little exercise. Go exercise. Then she's like talking about how her snake loves her more than her husband and only comes to her. And, and, it's, and it's trying to get over to me. It's trying to come to me because it loves me. So like every example of wrong anthropomorphism uh, that you could get, and, and there's also, so there was that, and then there's also been posts lately of that. A lot of times people think that's adorable when there's snakes on a blanket and doing this, and they'll post it because they think it's cute. Um, somebody posted on, I think, one of the Facebook groups asking, uh, oh no, it wasn't that. I'll get, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. But let's talk about this for a second. First of all, let me get her. God, she's just massive, and she's trying to... All right. Okay. Hold on. For some reason, this all my snakes like that door, and they try to sort of climb up the door. I don't know if it's the smell of the wood or what it is. Um, okay, she's good, I think. So let's let's get back to this. There we go. Now she's back. Let's get back to this. Uh, what what I was talking about. This thing of slithering and not getting anywhere. That's a snake that can't move forward. And you probably know that that you've probably noticed that your ball pythons don't often move like this across the floor, like super fast. It's not a thing that they do. That snake is very stressed because it's moving and it can't understand why it's not getting anywhere. And that f totally freaks them out because they don't, they don't have the conceptual awareness. They don't have the awareness of, oh, I'm just sliding on something that I can't get a grip on. They, they just don't understand it. It's like if you were moving your legs and you were walking and nothing is passing your eye line, you'd be like, what is going on? What kind of supernatural forces here are at work, right? So that poor snake is freaking out and she's videotaping and giggling and talking about how he's got the zoomies and everything and how, and look, it's trying to come over to me. Well, what it's doing is she's got her arm right there and at the front of the blanket and all it's trying to do is get a grip on the first thing that it can grab because it's feel, feeling like it's losing control. It just wants to grab onto something. You know, and her arm is there, and, and because it's trying to get to her arm, she's like, oh, my snake loves me. No. So that's a complete misinterpretation, anthropomorphism, uh, misinterpretation of what's going on with that snake, and it's causing the snake stress. The other thing, which is, I think, slightly less stressful, but I think it still does cause a little bit of stress, 
This is one where somebody posted on Facebook asking why snakes do this. He had his uh, a baby snake wrapped around his arm and it was it had grabbed his arm all the way and was doing that thing where it, where it sort of cinches along. It's, it's almost like it's giving you a massage. It feels great on your neck when they do it. They'll, they'll sort of grab and then cinch like that. So the post was made on a Facebook group, a whole bunch of responses. And if you've ever been on a Facebook group, you know that you'll get 50 responses, most of which are the exact same thing that somebody already said. Uh, and that's what it was. And the exact same thing that everybody was saying was, it's giving you a hug. It's hugs. It's not hugs. They don't. And, and I understand that probably most of those people, most, not all, most of the people were, were sort of joking, saying that tongue in cheek, but it's, it's not hugs. Uh, and there is a reason that they're moving like that. And it's that when a snake is on your skin, it's, it, it's some, it sometimes gets stuck and it can't move. So it's trying to grab on and move forward, but the more it grabs on, you're like a Chinese finger trap to it. If you know what those things are that you can't get your finger out of. Uh, the more it grips on, the harder it is for it to get away. So all you have to do to test that theory to see if that's actually what's going on is just lift your snake up a little bit off your skin and you'll see how quickly they move forward. They're just trying to move forward. And it's probably a little bit frustrating for them when, when they can't do it. Um, meanwhile, all these owners are going, oh, my snake's giving me a massage. It's, you know, my, look at, she's just starting to do that right now. She's not quite there yet, but she'll get stuck on my neck here in a minute. Oh, she's on my mic again. Hey, girl. Okay, I'm gonna put her back because I want her comfortable. She's, I mean, she hasn't ovulated yet, so it's not like she's gravid, but she's building follicles and Look at how big she is. Look at that big girl. She's so sweet. She's got such a sweet, sweet demeanor. If that's anthropomorphism too, right there, sweet demeanor. She's not, she doesn't have a sweet demeanor. She just is totally confident, not defensive, always curious, never complains. Um, that is what we call a sweet demeanor. Here's another thing. They come up for a kiss. Some people will go, oh, kisses, kisses, because your snake will come to your mouth, like, like Damara was just sort of almost doing. Again, it's not kisses. Uh, it's that when you talk or breathe, you emit heat. And they pick that up with their heat pits, those little holes in the front of their face are heat pits. And she's just coming up to your face to see if that's possibly a rat or a mouth, a mouse. <laughs> But it turns out that it's your mouth. Uh, so again, just, you know, in, in, interpreting this kind of behavior, not as hugs and kisses and things like that, but uh, as what they really are. The kisses thing, it doesn't matter, right? Like that doesn't matter if you interpret it like that. And if you want to go, oh, kisses and kiss your snake, no big deal if, it, you know, if that doesn't bother them. That's, it's not going to hurt them to misinterpret it. But just the idea of understanding that there are reasons that your snake does things that is totally different than the reason a dog or a cat does things or a human does things. Um, reptiles obviously are completely different, but their, you know, their mentality and their um, instinct and the way they move their body and why they move their body, why they do certain things are oftentimes different than the first thing that you think of because we're conditioned to think of our pets as dogs and cats because the, for most of us those were the first pets that we were that, that we got to know is dog and cat behavior and this is a pet so why wouldn't we go there with that with interpreting that kind of behavior snakes are just very different so i'm going to put her back uh because i want her to be comfortable oh mama's Oh, you're so big. Can you climb off my arm? Oh, big girl. Look at, look at, there's your home. Good girl. Oh, you're coming back out? Is that it? So here's what we're gonna try for a minute. She's at my feet right now. No, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work, Mama. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't want you exploring right now. You got new ferns to look at. What do you think of that, huh? What do you think of your new ferns? And you got a new flower? You got a new plastic flower? Oh my gosh, how exciting. And there's your hide. Oh man, look at all the enrichment in your tub. You don't need to be out and about. Good girl, good girl. 
All right, Damar is back. I think that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about as far as anthropomorphism goes. The, the point there being just be really careful at how you're interpreting things. A lot of times a misinterpretation or, or sort of a joking interpretation like a hug or a kiss, there's no harm in that. But it's, it's when you misinterpret something and it causes your snake stress, like too much handling and like just watching it go crazy because it can't move, stuff like that. Um, is uh, important to make sure that you're thinking, okay, it could be this, but it could also be something else. What else? What's another possibility that the snake is behaving this way? Okay, let's talk about a thing that I'm just calling mirroring right now. Uh, and I think it's really important to do, and it's something that I taught my five-year-old nephew about, but I think it's important for people of any ages to keep in mind when they're dealing with a snake. Uh, when my five-year-old nephew would come over, he wants to handle all of the snakes, and he can. There's no snake that he's that he can't handle. I usually start with Damara with him because she's the biggest, and she's also uh, least likely to ever freak out or or be scared of anything. And uh, as you may know, with a five-year-old child, they are a little bit crazy at times. And if they really like holding snakes, they get really excited about snakes, right? So what I had to explain to him is that snakes have a really calm energy and they want calmness all around them. Snakes move very slowly. You know, we're talking about my snakes, the ball pythons. There are certainly other varieties that don't move slowly, but uh, ball pythons move very slowly and they want really calm energy. And if you move too fast or, or even if you're not moving fast, but you just have really crazy energy, they're going to feel that and it's going to make them a little bit crazy. And we don't want the snakes to be crazy. So that was kind of the basic explanation that I, that I would give to my five-year-old nephew. Uh, and he always did well with that. We'd give him a quick reminder and he would do just fine. He'd calm down. Um, but the point there being that animals use their own energy and body language and things like that to communicate they can tell that a predator is a predator because of certain body language of that other animal that's a completely different species. Um, that, that's just how they, they, they read things is off of, off of your basic energy. And I'm not, I'm not talking about in a spiritual way like they, they get some spiritual vibe of your energy. I mean that when you are stressed out or freaked out or like you know somebody that's really freaked out to hold a snake and they're like ah, i don't know the snake is kind of feeling that way too like they're seeing that body language and picking up on the little subtlest things of this person that's freaking out even if they're not waving their arms around and everything the snake's going to be a little bit on edge you know maybe it doesn't know why but it's going to be kind of like ah, i don't know what's going on here so i notice with my snakes when i'm holding a snake, like when I was just holding Damara there, if I'm in front of the camera doing one of these videos, I have, uh, Hey, I'm Bob Bledsoe doing a video in kind of energy. Right. And when I'm not on camera, I'm much more calm. I'm a very, believe it or not, I'm a very Zen dude and, and you know, just calmness. And that's one of the reasons that I love snakes is I feel like snakes are the monks of the animal kingdom. They're just patient and calm and relaxed. And I find that if I pull a snake out and am the same way, patient, calm, and relaxed, they remain patient, calm, and relaxed. There's no freaking out. When I'm oftentimes, and you'll watch in my videos, when I'm holding a snake and I'm being like, hey, today we're talking about blah, blah, blah. That snake is like just kind of cruising all over and, and being a little bit crazy. Not too crazy, but I can tell that it's not their normal personality to just be kind of all over the place, like, like they are when I have that jumpy energy. So this is just something that I came up with, but it's something to keep in mind when you're, uh, especially letting a child handle a snake, to talk to them about that, that it's important that they're calm. We take, you know, with my five-year-old nephew, I have him take five deep breaths, things like that. Um, but, but also anybody that's afraid of snakes or anything like that, just calm and relax. It's the same thing with a dog. You know, you wouldn't, you, you, you're, if, if you're going up to a, um, a dog that you might be a little bit nervous about, you're gonna go real slow, relaxed posture, you know. Um, a, a I think a dog has the ability, obviously, to interpret 
um, human body language may be a little bit better than a snake, but still there is, there is an energy that you're giving out into the world that can be picked up on. And I think the calmer and more relaxed you are and the deeper breathing you're doing is much better for the snake remaining calm as well. That's my point. Let's get into the basics because I know a lot of people are here for that. You just got your snake or you're about to get your first snake. And one of the things that eventually dawns on you when you're a brand new snake owner is, how do I know if it's gonna bite me? Or how do I know if it's happy or whatever? Uh, so let's just briefly talk about that. And again, there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a uh, more in-depth video on this as soon as I have some hatchlings that are a little bit feisty. I wanna, I wanna um, talk about uh, how to deal with them. But just the basics. If your snake is uncomfortable, tense, and feeling afraid, their body language is gonna show you. So at the, at the maximum, they'll be balled up. So that's gonna be with smaller hatchlings usually. Sometimes bigger snakes will do that, but it's usually the smaller ones will actually ball up. That's why they're called a ball python. They'll be protecting their head. Uh, sometimes they don't have to ball up. They're just sort of in a shape, a pretzel shape or whatever, but super stiff. And you can tell when you're holding your snake and they're completely tensed up. So that's a tense, not super comfortable snake. They're kind of in, they're, they're getting themselves into fight or flight mode. Uh, and that's something to know about snakes, by the way, is just some basic modes that they're into, uh, that, or that they get into, which are basically, if they're in fight or flight mode, or if they're in feeding mode, they're not thinking. They're just, they're, they're just kind of going to be reactive. Um, once they start getting into thinking mode, and this is, this is uh, terminology from Kevin over at Nerd, who is the guru of all reptile behavior stuff. So his videos are great to watch. Um, but I like that he calls it thinking mode because that's what happens when they're not scared and they're not, they don't think they're about to be fed. So they'll just start exploring their, their environment and being curious and thinking and not just reacting on, on instinct. So if they're going to bite you, let's get back to that stiff body coupled with an S shaped neck, uh, means that they potentially could strike whether they're in feeding mode or in fight or flight mode, they could potentially strike that way. There are, they're also, if they're, if, if they feel like you're a threat, they'll be trained right on you and, and be real still. Uh, that means that they could potentially strike. However, snakes also oftentimes just sit in an S position. So it doesn't always mean that they're going to strike. Um, but if you've just startled your snake and you see him get into this really tense posture and, and put, put their neck in that S position with their head slightly up, that's, that's a potential for an oncoming strike, an incoming strike. Uh, so just let them relax maybe before you, before you just go at them. And also, you know, don't just go at their face. We'll talk about this more in the other video, but, but you want to you wanna reach in from behind, let them know you're there. Don't touch them right on the head. Don't touch them right on the tip of the tail right away. Just, you know, rub them on the back. Let them know you're there. Um, they'll be fine. By the way, if you do get a bite, it's not a big deal. It's just a fast movement and it scares people. But those teeth are, there's a lot of teeth and they're very sharp, but they're also very small. They're not going to do any damage they, you'll have a little row of teeth marks that you'll bleed from, but not terribly. It's, you, you really barely feel it. Those teeth are so small and so sharp that you don't even feel it. It just, it looks worse than it is. And the speed of their strike is, is worse than it is. So just a note for the new people that have never been bitten by a ball python, uh, I would much rather take a bite from a ball python than I would a bite from a dog or a bite or a scratch from a cat. Way worse than, than a ball python nip. Not a big deal. Um, okay, so what does it look like when they are, we're going to say happy, but, but what I mean is they're not being defensive. They don't, they don't find you a threat. You're, you've got them in your hand and uh, they don't think that you're going to murder them, which doesn't take very long, by the way. Sometimes when you go in to pick up your ball python, they immediately think that they're about to be murdered. So they get sort of defensive or they try to flee or something like that. But as soon as you bring them out of their enclosure, they kind of go, oh, 
I remember this dude. And, and they sort of, they'll just start exploring. They're like, well, I'm here anyway. I didn't really want to come out of my enclosure, but I guess since I'm here, I'll just start, you know, exploring. Um, so what they look like when, when they're in that mode is their body relaxes. You, you'll just feel them relax and they'll kind of wrap around your arm or whatever. And their tongue flicks will become slower and, and steady. They'll still be doing tongue flicks, but they're not going to be going brent, 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 like that. Um, in that case, if they're doing that, they're maybe looking for danger, but they're also looking for food or they're looking for a mate uh, when they're doing blam, 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 you know, super rapid tongue flicks. But slow and steady tongue flicking, just slowly moving about, they're relaxed. Uh, and that's, a, that's, that's the mode that you want your ball python to be in. And chances are, not with all snakes, but with ball pythons, chances are if they're in that mode, they're probably not going to quickly jump into defense mode and then just bite you all of a sudden or jump into feed mode and just bite you all of a sudden, especially if you're, if you're holding them, they're not going to think that they're going to be fed unless, unless you've been feeding them out of your hand, which I doubt you are. When I pull my snakes out, uh, to have them get some exercise or some enrichment or whatever, I pay attention to what they kind of want to do. Um, so Oftentimes I bring them to my couch and I have a bunch of pillows on my couch. They, they all know because they've been on my couch enough. They all know that they have the option of going behind me and crawling between those pillows and, and just chilling in a dark space behind the pillows. If they do that, I know that they're not real interested in exploring and I don't spend much time with them behind the pillows. I let them get back there if they want to for a minute, but then I put them back in their enclosure. The other option is they can move forward and they can get down on the floor or they can get down, they can get onto this uh, sort of credenza that I have in front of the couch and they can move around the room and I supervise and I make sure they don't get into trouble. But uh, a ball python moving out into the open like that when they're not, there's nothing around really that they can hide from uh, or, or I mean hide under. Uh, that means that they're totally comfortable. They don't think that they're going to be attacked and um, they're kind of in a, in a mood where they're happy to explore around. So I just watch their body language and for you new snake owners, you can do a bit of that. Make note of their body language, like every little thing, just sort of make note of and it's not gonna take you long before you get to know your snake. You're gonna, you're gonna get to know what time of day they like to come out. There might be some certain times of day. There's certain things that they might enjoy doing. Um, but I have a couple of my snakes that really like crawling over a big pile of laundry or, or I'll, before I make my bed in the morning, I'll let Freya crawl over all the covers that are, that are kind of jumbled up and whatever, and the pillows and stuff like that. It's just a terrain that she likes to cruise around and check out. So you'll, you'll learn those things about your snake and, um, uh, you'll watch the body language and begin to learn the body language, but just the basics of tense snake versus not tense and rapid tongue flicking versus slow and steady tongue flicking um, versus no tongue flicking at all. Sometimes no tongue flicking at all it means, well, it usually means they're asleep, but it also could mean that they are, they're really afraid they're they're in in fear so they've sort of froze up like a statue in fear so i think i covered it all i this was one that i sort of uh went, i mean i kind of wing all of these but i think i covered what i wanted to cover in this video on behavior there's going to be more there will be more than two there will be probably more than three we're gonna we're gonna go in depth on certain things of behavior but i felt like for this video because i've been seeing it so much online I wanted to talk about the anthropomorphism and just make sure that, that people are seeing their snake for what it is and not attributing human behaviors, but especially dog and cat behaviors to what your, what your snake is doing. Um, uh, because they're not, they don't care about getting exercise. They don't get the zoomies. <laughs> there's, there's certain things that definitely um, are stressors for them. And it's really hard to tell when your snake is stressed because they don't make a noise and they don't make a face. So you've got to go with body language. Um, so paying attention to that is really important. Anyway, that's it. I, th I think we did it. Um, Kent, 
would you please do a sign off that is not ridiculous and uh, not awkward? Just a just a nice sign off. Since you are the marketing guy, by the way, you guys, Kent is now the marketing guy. He's not just the cameraman. He's the marketing department of Green Room Pythons at this point. Hi, I'm Kent Bledsoe, and I'm the marketing department for uh, Green Room Pythons company. Um, and uh, like and subscribe, uh, push the like button and hit subs the subscribe button and um, comment, make a comment and send your free t-shirts and um, watch out for the snakes because they are out for blood. Thanks, Kent. See you all next time. <laughs>